for another music and makeup Sunday. So today I will be talking about a band that is near and dear to my heart. I love this band so much actually. I've seen them three times now. Um, if you can't guess, it's the Lumineers. This is the only shirt that I have by them though, unfortunately. I suck and can never get to the concerts early enough to be able to get like a cute concert tee and for some reason their merch always just goes so fast so i've seen them at picnic and i was not able to get a picnic concert t-shirt and i've seen them twice on their own even the one time i really wanted to support them and get like their water bottle that the proceeds were going towards uh help people with addiction and uh even like I wasn't even able to get one of those because they just sell out so fast but I think next time I see them I'm definitely going to try to get there early so that I can stock up on some merch because as of right now I have a concert quilt and this is the only like Lumineers t-shirt I have for it but I am going to try to go online and try to find some of those concert tees sometimes people buy them with only the intention to resell them yeah, so I definitely got off topic there. But yeah, so I'm doing the Lumineers today, guys. I'm really excited about it. If you're ever wondering about the products I use, I list them down below and uh, same with all the sources that I get my information from. So you can see them down below. Uh, other than that, let's get started. So the story begins in Ramsey, New Jersey, where Wesley Schultz is born and raised. And Wesley Schultz is kind of, I guess you would kind of say he's like the face of the band. He's the lead singer and guitarist of the band and one of the co-founders. Wesley, at a very young age, was already kind of a gentleman of the arts, if you would say. At the age of nine, the New York Times gave him an interview after a man by the name of Dennis Cobre, who toured elementary schools, just teaching kids about classic composers. He would imitate classic composers um, on the piano. Wes was interviewed and Wes said, quote, I spend a lot of time on my drawings and it turns out good because I've been practicing. So at a young age, Wes had already kind of developed a love for art in all forms and at that time, he was focusing on his drawings, but little did he know at that time that that art would end up flourishing into something so much more. So growing up, Wesley had a best friend and his name was Joshua Freights. So Joshua Freights and Wes were BFFs growing up and Joshua had a younger brother named Jeremiah Freights. Unfortunately, Joshua is no longer with us today. He died of a drug overdose in 2001. At that point in time, he was 19, uh, Wesley was 19, and poor Jeremiah was only 15, losing his brother at such a young age. Him and his brother seemed to have a very good bond uh, over music, in particular, classical music. So it seems that Jeremiah and Wes had always had a very brother-like bond just because of the fact that Wes and Josh were already so close. You know how it is. When you're just so close to one sibling, you by default become almost like family to the other sibling, especially when they're close in age. So Wes and Jeremiah had already kind of had this like brotherly type relationship, which is nice uh, because they were able to help each other and comfort each other through you know the hard times of losing a brother and best friend. A little bit more about Jeremiah. He was also born and raised in Ramsey, New Jersey. He would make little drum sets out of Tupperware and Folger's coffee containers and then instead of getting drumsticks he would use little chopsticks. As a Asian American I approve. In an interview, Freight speaks about his younger years. He says, quote, I just love Beethoven. I fell in love with not just the symphony of Beethoven, but him on the piano. And then I'll never forget the first time I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. I just loved the guitar intro, end quote. 
He soon realized that he could not play that song on the piano, and this is when his love for other instruments just grew immensely, and he realized how much he started to love things like the guitar and the drums more and um, other instruments. So it seemed at a young age he was just so intrigued by all these other instruments. Although Jeremiah and Wesley always had a brother-like bond with Josh's death, it seemed that the two kind of grew a little bit closer. Even though that they were already close, I think uh, such a traumatizing event would bring two people closer. I mean, it could either drive people away, but in this case, it, it drove two people together and they decided that they wanted to start creating more music together. And that is exactly what they did. And it's great that they were able to bond over this. They do speak a lot about or write about a lot of things like addiction and things like that in their in their music. So I think that's their way of being uh, vocal about it. But please do remember that, you know, this is a very private subject and a very vulnerable subject. And I think that as a society, because of who they are, we are just so interested to know every little detail, but we do have to remember that they are real people too and they deserve their privacy. That's something that's very, very hard to talk about. And it's something that's very hard to um, discuss, especially when it's not, it's not your life. It's somebody around you or somebody that's close to you. So I just want everybody to know that having somebody in your life that struggles with addiction is extremely hard and it, it makes you want to be more of a private person on so many different levels because you're seeing parts of somebody else that it, when they're at their lowest and I just want to make it very clear that after watching some of the interviews with the Lumineers they've changed my view on addiction a lot. I always thought that there was even though it wasn't a, a disease, um, I always thought that there was some part of people where there is a little bit of a willpower issue. And after watching the Lumineers and how they discuss addiction and how they talk about it and their views and dealing with it, I've, I've completely changed my thinking. So I'm so grateful for the interviews that they have done because I've realized that it's not a moral issue. It's not a willpower itch issue. It's it's truly a, a sickening disease. And, and I feel like I'm talking about addiction a lot in my videos, but it seems to be a pattern. <laughs> but I, I will say that um, we do need to be very respectful of their privacy. And even though I am bringing it up in the video today, because I do think it did play a little bit of a part in how Jeremiah and Wesley did become a little bit closer. I, I don't want people to pry into their life. And I think that if they decide that they want to speak about it or talk about Jeremiah's brother, I think that that's on them to decide when they are ready to do that or when they are comfortable. But I feel like their music talks about it so much that... It, it doesn't even need to be talked about. And I think that we need to give them their privacy because it seems like they have been very private on the subject. So I just wanted to mention that. I know I kind of just rambled for a little bit, but uh, like I said, it's definitely changed my view on how I view addiction. Okay, I'll stop rambling now. We'll get back to the story. So sorry if I'm like, I know this is like awkward when I use my mirror, but for things like eyeliner and my lashes, I just, I have to. There's no way around it. Also, doing my eyeliner while talking is very hard uh, for those of you don't who don't know. But I'm going to do my best. So the two start writing music together and traveling around New York. According to Wesley, the band became the Lumineers after they had gone to a show in New Jersey. They were, well, a gig in New Jersey. And... I guess another band called the Lumineers where it was supposed to go on next week, but they called them the Lumineers and it just stuck. You know what I just realized is I wonder if that band ever got like mad. They technically took their name. Huh. I wonder. 
It's like the first like real gig the Lumineers ever did in New York City was at this place called the Pussycat Lounge. I guess this burlesque club had like the burlesque club downstairs and then the top part was more of like a music venue but there was only one bathroom which was down in the club and there's like no dressing rooms or anything like that so everybody just saw everything walking around and uh yeah I thought that was a really fun first show though. With the frustrations about the cost of living and struggling as an upcoming band, the two decided to pack up their bags and they left for Denver, which is also a name of one of their songs. So kind of wonder where they got the inspiration from. Maybe. I watched an interview where Wesley explained that, especially with music, it's not always about where you are. And it's not always about being in the biggest city. It's about being in an affordable place to live so that you're able to have a good work-life balance in order to pursue your music. At the time, Denver was very, it was pretty cheap to live still. I feel like the price has gone up a lot just because it used to be kind of this hidden gem. And well, it's not hidden no more. Everybody wants to be in Colorado, to be honest. I wanna to move to Colorado, I wish. So basically, they leave, and when they get there, they put in an ad to Craigslist, looking for a classical cellist. Well, their prayers were answered because Neela Pekarik answered their Craigslist ad. Neela had originally studied to be a teacher in the music field, so she had her teaching degree and studied a crazy amount of, you know, musical background. So she decided to answer this Craigslist ad, but it was mostly just kind of as like, I'm going to do this while I pass time looking for a career in, you know, the things that I've studied. I don't think that anyone fully at this time fully realized you know how big the luminaires were going to be obviously the boys had set out for this because upon meeting them she had realized that this is truly what they wanted to do and that they were in it for the long haul Pekrick said quote it felt very natural from the get-go and playing shows was really fun and I looked forward to practices end quote without realizing it Neela had kind of changed the sound of the Lumineers. I guess at first Wesley and Jeremiah would come out with like a very rugged look. Jeremiah I think used to wear a pirate hat I think but from an interview it seemed that Wes had said that the band was able to resonate with a larger fan base because before it was more just like a manly men's kind of group and then when they brought Neela on they created more of this softer vibe. Okay guys more eyeliner. <laughs> Why did I choose this look? The Lumineers didn't stop adding members with Nayla. They decided to also bring on a man named Stealth Olving, which, by the way, that's like an awesome name. So Stealth, props to your mom. I'm not even sure if he's ever gonna see this, but props to your mama, because it's a really cool name, Stealth. Um, <laughs> They brought on this pianist after interacting with him on MySpace for approximately two years. He was a Colorado native, I guess you would say. Uh, the band made him an official touring member in 2011. Originally he was supposed to be brought in as just a bass player, but then later changed to piano. So then in 2012, the Lumineers came out with their first album, which was self-titled. The single Ho Hey, which I feel like everybody and their mother knows, became a huge hit and created a lot of recognition for the band. You guys, this is a lot harder than it looks. It's so hard to talk and do this. I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm ruining this video. <laughs> so Jeremiah spoke in an interview stating, quote, we ended up selling over 3 million albums worldwide, but I think being known for that one song, and I probably would have to agree, due to the overall album being such a well-written album, songs like Stubborn Love and 
Submarines became very big hits as well. On December 25th of 2012, the band was nominated for two Grammys, the Best New Artist Award as well as Best Americana Album. The next year, the band released a deluxe edition of their self-titled album. It included five bonus tracks and, and over 25 minutes of video footage. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw that they also had a booklet as well. The five songs released were Ain't Nobody's Problem, uh, this Must Be The Place, Elois, Darlene, and Slow It Down, which Slow It Down is actually one of like my favorite heartbreak songs. In 2014, the band wrote two songs for The Hunger Games Mockingjay. One of the songs they just wrote the music to, and then the other one they wrote the lyrics and the music. To. But they, they wrote Gale Song as well as The Hanging Tree. So the second album, Cleopatra, was released on April 8th of 2016, which is actually one day after my birthday. I am April 7th. So this was an awesome late birthday to Ashley. This was four years after their self-titled album was released. So it took them four years to come out with Cleopatra. The song Ophelia quickly rose to the number one on, I think it was the triple A uh, chart and stayed there for 13 weeks. And it actually ended 2016 as Billboard's number one alternative song. Cleopatra followed right behind Ophelia, claiming the number two spot on AAA charts radio, and Angela followed right behind that. This made the album Cleopatra the first independent album to have three top five singles at alternative radio since media base reporting started. In April of 2017, the short film, The Ballard of Cleopatra, was released. It's a short film that depicts the life of modern-day Cleopatra, the, like who they kind of envisioned while writing the song, the music, you know. While recording the album, Simon Felice, who is the producer of Cleopatra, introduced Byron Isaacs to the guys. The rest is history and Byron became a touring member of the band and uh, as a bassist and backup vocals. So then, unfortunately, in 2018, Mila leaves the band to focus on her solo career. But at the same year, Lauren Jacobson uh, joins the touring band as backing vocals and violinist. In September of 2019, the band released its third album called Three, and the album consisted of three chapters. Chapter one, Gloria Sparks. Chapter two, Junior Sparks. And chapter three, Jimmy Sparks. When talking about the album, Wes speaks out saying, quote, we weren't going for perfect. We were going for the most vibe or most feeling. I was fortunate enough to be able to see the Lumineers a few times live. And if you are a Luminators fan and have not seen them live, I definitely suggest it. They are really great. I did kind of want to talk about their live shows really quickly. Every time I go see them, I literally get physical chills because A, their performance, B, just the, the raw talent that every single member has up there. I was also fortunate enough to see them the day before we got shut down. So I saw them at Pfizer Forum and literally the next day they canceled the rest of their tour due to COVID-19. So I was so fortunate to be able to see them right before all of that happened. It's the last concert I've gone to. So I'm really freaking out right now. I'm really missing concerts, but stay at home, you guys. Like I'm not pushing for concerts to happen anytime soon. Just, it just sucks. <laughs> it just really sucks, but they have been awesome. They've been doing like little live things on you know instagram and facebook and stuff for you know people to not feel so alone which is really great so really quickly i just wanted to talk about their performance live wesley schultz like i said he is the lead singer of the band and co-founder uh jeremiah is the other co-founder and he is the drummer so wesley does vocals and then guitar he's just amazing at making big concerts feel so intimate the way he talks to the crowd 
He makes it feel like he's talking to you specifically. He doesn't like scream into the mic or anything. They're both uh, very soft-spoken people from what I've seen in like interviews and stuff. Jeremiah has so much talent and so much pr stage presence, but still also making it a very intimate performance. Wesley always does this like fun little like kick dance thing I, where he like kind of stomps. They both do kind of do that. You, I mean, you don't really see it as often from Jeremiah because he's usually on the drum set and it, it's super cute. I love it. But yeah, Lauren Jacobson. Who? That woman, if I could have the pipes that Lauren Jacobson has, I was like watching an interview and it seems that she has almost perfect pitch. And she claims that, oh, it's not perfect. It's almost, per but it's, it's perfect. It's a talent that I have never seen before. Also, same with her playing the violin. It just seems like it comes so natural to her. And I'm not saying that she hasn't put in hard work. I'm I can only imagine how much work it takes to be that good, but when she plays, it just looks so natural, like she's not even trying. Then there's Brandon Miller, and Brandon Miller is like that backup person you don't truly appreciate until you stand back and kind of just only watch him, which I did do at the last concert we were at. We were at Pfizer Forum and we were kind of up a little bit, so we were able to kind of see the full stage very, very well. And I just, I didn't realize how important of a member he was to the band. And after watching him, I was like, yeah, there's no way this, this sound would be the same without him. So Brandon plays guitar, mandolin, and percussions. So Stealth is probably the most interesting pianist I've ever seen live. And I've seen a lot of concerts, so... I mean, I guess it's not saying much, I mean, what do I know? But uh, yeah, Stealth is the most energetic pianist I've ever seen live. His energy and charisma is the most absolutely amazing thing. And he does all his performances barefoot, which is pretty cool. I've never seen a pianist play barefoot. Actually, the last time I saw him, he like ran to the front of the stage and like was kind of dancing with Wesley and then like right before his piano solo came up he like ran to his ran back to the piano and like you know hit it just in time but I mean he booked it and he's like barefoot and he like did this whole jump thing he looked like a freaking spider monkey <laughs> or something I don't know it was really cool uh yeah so like little things like that just make them really great performers and then, of course, we can't forget uh, Byron Isaacs. He also has such a great stage presence. He plays the bass, and his energy is just very electric and contagious. He, too, is also one of those people that's just up there just, like, super jamming out. He's really into it. You can tell he's really enjoying his life and what he's doing. So, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure there's more members of the band that I'm missing. So if there are, I truly apologize. I know the last time I saw them, they introduced like what seemed like a five billion of people. Um, so I'm really sorry if I'm missing somebody, but, uh, this is all I can remember and what I read. So again, if I'm missing somebody, I apologize. Yeah, but I'm going to change really quick. Alrighty. So this is my, uh, Cleopatra look. I hope you guys liked it. I obviously did Cleopatra because of their album Cleopatra. I'm not gonna lie, I really resonated with that song. Um, not so much because of the lyrics or anything. I mean, of course the lyrics are amazing, but when I first saw that they had a song named Cleopatra, I was super excited about it because I love Cleopatra. I love the movie Cleopatra. I actually was Cleopatra for Halloween one year. I'll like put the picture here. I was super excited about the Cleopatra song and so I decided to do a look like Cleopatra. So this is my um, 2020 Cleopatra look. Sorry that the eyeliner like <laughs> was a total mess. Do the thing, subscribe, like, comment, share. Uh, I do appreciate the shares. I got so many on my last video. I truly appreciate it. So thank you so much for the love you guys. Um, every view counts, every view helps. And uh, please comment below on what like band you would like me to do next. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep doing bands I love. And, you know, that might not be fun for you guys. Uh, so, yeah, please, 
you know, comment and let me know what bands you would like me to do. Thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate you watching and spending your time with me and getting ready with me. Um, I will see you next Sunday for Music and Makeup Sunday. Bye!